All right, I'm afraid I can't really do a two-minute overview of this one because it's much more about the idea of what's contained here rather than how pretty it looks. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just a paperback, right? Uh, and if I just showed it to you, I think people would be quite confused. So let's talk about what this is. For those of you who don't know what the Greco-Egyptian magical papyri are, they were a set of codices and scrolls and uh, other texts that were discovered in the region of Egypt and Greece, depicting various spells, mostly Egypt. And uh, they included very syncretic magic, so um, invoking just as easily the Abrahamic god as much as the Greek gods, as much as the Egyptian gods, as much as, yeah, any other god under the sun. And, well, this has been the standard edition. Hans-Dieter Betts edited this uh, edition, uh, is it 30 years ago, something along those lines? Uh, it's uh, It's been very, very popular, and um, one of the most famous spells in here would be the Stele of Je, uh, I'm not sure that's the correct pronunciation, but uh, it's basically the headless right, the bornless right. Yeah, the, the book is full of amazing recipes and spells calling on various deities to achieve various worldly and unworldly outcomes, right? Desires. Uh, very, very cool stuff and very powerful stuff. Jack Grail's got a fantastic course on it called PGM 50 Rights for 50 Nights. All right, that should give you uh, a little outline of what's going on here. Now, what you may notice here is that it's written here, Volume 1 Texts. And uh, that's because uh, the plan had been to make a, a second volume. Uh, this was uh, made with all of the most complete spells first, right? So all of the very easy to read spells are at the beginning. And as you go further and further towards the back of the text, uh, they, they, um, the spells become more and more sparse and uh, there, there are more and more holes in the in the documents that they were translated from. So they just get to get more difficult to read. And so volume two was supposed to be the remaining ones, the ones that were really very, very difficult to read. And so, yeah, that book never got made. <laughs> uh, that book, um, yeah, would have been quite expensive to produce, of course. And yeah, it would just have been full of difficult to read spells. And so very few people would have been interested. So yeah, volume two never got made. Q. Christopher A. Faraoni and Sofia Toralias Tovar. Uh, so this is a volume one, but they've taken a different approach. They have ordered the texts here in chronological order. So we're starting with some texts that are actually quite difficult to decipher. Obviously, the older the text, uh, the more... Uh, gnarly <laughs> the codices were. The papyri would have been disintegrated in many places and kind of difficult to work out. But nevertheless, this gives you an idea of the progression of the magic, which this kind of doesn't. Right? So that's what's so nice about this, is that you're you're getting to see the magic of a particular period associated with other magic from that same period. And then the more you go into the book, the more it changes, but it changes progressively. And you'll get to see the names of the gods invoked changing, and you'll get to get a feel for the kinds of things that people were seeking and uh, and so on. Very, very cool stuff. So you can see that I'm getting towards the middle of the book already, and you can see that the, the translation is quite easy to read by this time, right? Whereas those at the very beginning, and this is all you can really work out, like, you know, very difficult to, 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 to get the meaning of what's going on here because there's so much missing. You're getting a, a transliteration 
of what was written there. Right, some of it in Greek, some of it in yeah, demotic, I guess. Um, yeah, and then the translation, and then copious footnotes, which is very very cool. If I just uh, pull out here for a little bit, you'll be able to see just how large the book is. It's copious, <laughs> lots and lots going on here. I'll do a quick um, a quick shot of the page of contents, the tables of contents, should I say. Now the, there's kind of, all right, I'll show you. You've got the contents here with literally just the, the codes, you know, GEMF, as you remember, it stands for Greek and Egyptian magical formularies. And then you've got the equivalent of where that was uh, in the PGM order of things, right? So GMF one, uh, the first book in this particular way of ordering things corresponds to PGM 111. Yeah, so I, I actually looked it up and it's quite far into the back, right? PGM, um, yeah, it's it's actually further into the back than that. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna find it for you. It took me ages to find it. The the translation is it gives you the same idea, of course. You're not going to be surprised by how 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 different the translation is. You may be surprised by some of the choices of word that has been um, selected, but um, uh, in 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 this edition, they've they've really done their best to keep the translations as literal as possible, which is really helpful actually in in this particular case. Right, they're not translating uh, a novel; they're translating some magical formularies, so you want that to be as accurate as it can possibly be. Yeah, and you can see that PGM5, which is the one that contains the stele of Zhu, is not contained here. I guess that'll make an appearance in the later, in the second volume, whenever that appears. Little note maybe about a another book that you might find by the same editors. So this is uh, the list of the individual recipes, which I'm just showing you while I'm talking. Um, uh, because there's lots and lots of them. Yeah, so you'll find uh, by the same authors quite a few other books. And one of them has got an almost identical title. Uh, it's kind of white and it's got various colours on it and it's a hard cover. And you might think that it's this just with a hard cover. Wouldn't that be nice? But no, it's not. It's a series of essays that have been written by scholars uh, on the topic of the PGM. So, yeah, a, a very, very cool looking book. Very expensive, if I remember correctly. This is also pretty expensive. But uh, but yes, it's the latest version, it's the latest, most up-to-date edition of the PGM. And I think that it's a, a really nice resource to have. I must apologise if I'm making anyone seasick with the movements of my hands here. I'm doing my very best to keep the, the phone steady. But uh, yeah, you get a, a just a, an idea of the kinds of concerns of the people at the time. I guess it hasn't changed very much. I guess what has definitely changed is the kind of sensitivities, you know, what's, uh, what's, what is, <laughs> like that 82 to 83 there. Yeah, it's quite, uh, quite straightforward, you know. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I, I can't really imagine, you know, Llewellyn putting out a book of, of magical spells that contains uh, these specific titles. But um, from a, uh, a historical perspective, it's fascinating. And it also gives us an idea of where our magic has come from, you know. And I think that that's really what's um, where the the value is for for many magical practitioners. Uh, yeah, if uh, you can um, 
you can pause the screen right there and have a have a quick read of that paragraph. It's quite enlightening, quite uh, quite cool. There we go. All right, so that's about it from me. I hope you yeah got something out of this. Uh, quick, it's not really a review, it's uh, it's an overview, but it's uh, uh, I did feel like it was worth mentioning some of those things that wouldn't be obvious with just a, a two-minute flyover. There we go. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.